it's almost like being a wounded animal isn't it in a way sometimes you need to sort of retreat into your cocoon hibernate for a little while before you poke your head out again I'm struggling a little bit there's so much going on right now we're all feeling it no matter what level that is a lot of people are saying oh I just don't feel like doing anything I feel overwhelmed and then I, I shut down this is a natural human reaction don't beat yourself up too much but just remember that those little teeny tiny things really do matter and in fact if you think about it those little things are really not so little after all are they what can I say? The mind is boggling. So many of you were commenting how lovely and clean the flat was, how lucky the landlord was, etc, etc. That is the nature of some human beings on this planet right now. Is it something or is it nothing special? As the inevitable bends and bumps appear in the road, we can choose how we think about them. This can lead to misery or if we remember to notice the seemingly small ordinary things that tend to just tick over in the background, quietly and unintentionally ignored. These are the events that can shape our joy, which can direct us back to positive thinking and lift our spirits away from distress or depression. Never forget that every mind is shaped by the most ordinary experiences, wrote the French poet Paul Valéry. To say that it is ordinary is to say it is of the kind that has made the biggest contribution to the formation of your most basic ideas. wear these earrings with my coat because it's the sound on because they are too big and they yeah get in the way you know how it is anyway I had to stay at home yesterday because I was having a parcel delivered and I needed to sign for it and I've got a full set of prismas wanted these for over 10 years about 10 years ago just over before we set off on van life james got me a set of 60 but this is a set of 100 and 150 in there so i'm really excited to try those i'm gonna put together this storage thing as well because i'm kind of struggling a bit with my markers some of my pens and i didn't want to put them vertical i want to kind of have them semi-horizontal so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that this is a really good solution for that. I was never the one to write up a song for just anyone I I was always the one to find myself lost in all conversations, oh Cause I've always been told that things will unfold if you keep on waiting But then you came along and proved me all wrong, I was so mistaken Cause you glue all the pieces back together Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better Yeah, you, you're making me wanna try forever And I feel so free my sweet baby I was never the one to give up the ghost no I was so stuck I think I've got that organized now which is amazing super helpful right so i need to find a spot for it yes i have sold a couple of paintings i need to get those wrapped up i need to remove this one from my watercolor pad the lady that's buying them is the same she's actually bought both and she feels like a dear friend because i know she's been around quite a while and it's not the first original art that she's actually bought she supports me and has done for a long time and I kind of feel like I know her in a way. So this is Fairy of the Wild, so she's the first one to go. And I think to 
myself And I'm thinking out loud We won't need nothing else For the rest of our time And I know it so well I will always be by your side Cause you glue all the pieces back together Yeah, you, you take them all wrong to make them better Yeah, you, you're making me wanna try forever I feel so free I'm a sweet baby Cause you glue all the pieces back together Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better Yeah, you Making me wanna try forever I feel so free I'm my sweet baby the best. I wouldn't say it's uber strong, it's kind of like a, a cheapy solution, but I'm not going to be piling stuff in there. I think I, if I needed more storage I'll get another one and then that can work really well next to it. But it's just nice to be able to see all this stuff and be able to organise it a little bit because I rummage a lot and I wonder how much time we spend rummaging. Anyway, to catch you up with stuff then, there's been a bit of trouble and this will probably surprise you if you saw the last videos you will know that we've recently moved house from a flat into a house and both the properties were rentals so obviously leaving a rental you clean up and you hopefully fingers crossed get your deposit back if you saw the last video you will have seen how much work james and i put into cleaning up the flat and how polished and ship shape it was when we left and it wasn't like that when we found it, which was clearly obviously in the photographs and recorded on the inventory when we moved in four and a half years ago or so. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I had quite a lot of comments, loads of comments in fact, saying, your lucky landlord and lucky next tenant, you know, you've made a really good job, you've cleaned it up so well and above and beyond and all that stuff. And we did because we wanted to take pride in the fact that we left it in a better state than when we found it, which is quite kind of where we're coming from. And I know a lot of you do that as well because you left me comments. Anyway, guess what? Yes, the landlord wrote and said he wanted to deduct, not for damage, not for anything, but a cleaning fee. So obviously he's trying it on. Now, I don't say this next part lightly either. I do think that we should be really careful when we choose our battles and some battles are simply not worth it. But in this case, I felt it was. I think it just felt so unjust and a complete rip off of trying to get money. So in that sense, a theft from our deposit. So we'd left the flat beautiful and really clean. Yeah, it was a no-brainer to see that we would get 100% deposit back. And certainly any comeback on cleaning fees were a case of somebody trying it on. Now, I will admit that everything wasn't perfect and I missed a spot on the skirting board behind the living room door. So there's a photo on the exit report, which is what they're using to say they want to charge us quite a big chunk of the deposit for a cleaning fee. The person has, I think, gone in with the intention of looking for dirt and also turning up contrast on photographs to make it look worse than it was. Anyway, that's just my intuition working there. I can't, I don't have proof of that, but yeah, gone in with a finger and there's dust. So I missed a bit, but most of it, I would say 95% of those skirting boards, if not more, were super clean, mopped, wiped, hoovered. The whole floors were hoovered. I've even got video footage of James hoovering on moving day. Obviously took a full tour of the place as well, how we left it. So I do have evidence, but they're really battling me on it. I already replied in quite 
detail to an email and they also had a thing where on our contract it states that if the landlord wants to deduct money from the deposit he has to inform the tenants within 10 days and they didn't they were outside that time frame so I sort of was trying to argue to say you know do I have to even prove and evidence this in any way I disagree with so much of you know this exit report but in actual fact do I need to disagree with it at all because they missed the deadline within that 10 day time frame she's saying that that, that clause in the contract doesn't mean anything anymore because something was changed further back in an email that was sent informing us but I'm saying we did get the email informing of us of the change of deposit scheme I know this is a bit convoluted just let me get it let me get it out at the end of the day she's saying you know that's a clause that was you know taken away at that point but James and I feel that any clause to any contract I mean, isn't this basic contract law? If you have legal wisdom, do let me know in the comments. I'm completely, you know, a lay person. I have no idea, but my logic would suggest quite strongly that if you're gonna change a contract, you need to let parties know and parties need to sign. That wasn't done quite clearly. So I still feel, and James still feels, that they're outside that contract. However, I did spend time yesterday detailing evidence to argue my point and offered them a very minute amount to reflect what would need to be done. Yes, so wiping some sockets in the kitchen that I missed, a little bit of skirting board. But yeah, they're, they're saying they need it hoovering, they need cobwebs removing, and the cobwebs they're showing, the only cobwebs they're showing, were also in the original inventory when we moved in. So you are supposed to leave it the same state that you found it, which is also on the contract. They can't surely argue so we'll see i emailed that back yesterday so we shall see what can i say the mind is boggling this mind is boggling around it so i just thought i would say that because so many of you were commenting how lovely and clean the flat was and how hard we'd worked and how lucky the landlord was etc etc and yeah that is the nature of some human beings on this planet right now I guess there's a few personal things as well that I need to kind of catch you up on. I've been having a few health issues, which I haven't mentioned, but for about a year now, I've been having some problems. So I'm getting a lot of fibromyalgia type symptoms. And you know, if anyone has got that, you will know they, these things do come and go. But most of the time, at the moment they're not going. It's more like they're coming. <laughs> so some days it just hits me really hard. Microphone action on. Quite often I forget to put it on. Anyway, I should be swatching my new Prisma colours. Yes, that's the other reason why I've kind of got that um, desk storage thing for my pens because I know that I need to make room. Wow, some of these colours are so pretty. So as I say, I had the pack of 60. A lot of those have run out and anyone that knows anything about Prisma colours will know I don't recommend them because they break. You know, you sharpen them and they break and break and break and they're really expensive. Where with the Caran d'Ache Luminance, these made in Switzerland, really all the leads are centralised. They're really nicely made. The leads very rarely break, if ever. So, good job there wasn't water in that. Just looking at a couple of colours here that look really pretty. Lighter blues and greens. Mmm, look pretty. Anyway, I'll swatch them all. I'm gonna put them up there, because if I drop them, that will be a complete disaster. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, I'm struggling a bit with my physical health. I guess what I'm trying to say is that, you know, some days I'm really struggling to get out of the house. And I know I'm not the only one that feels like that. And maybe as well, menopausal type things going on, hormonal changes and everything like that. So I'm not, you know, completely oblivious to that at all. But at the same time, I've kind of been going through the menopause tunnel for a number of years now, shall we say. So I kind of know what's what with symptoms. I might do a complete health overhaul reset, if you like. Get rid of some of the baddie things that I'm doing. Because I'm doing a lot of good, but I'm also doing a lot of junk as well. <laughs> And if you're like me and you're somewhere where it's actually quite cold at the moment, then comfort food 
is a real thing, isn't it? Because we're cold and we just want to eat something. So I've been eating some really unhealthy things. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a snacker. I like to snack and I like savoury snacks. So by that, I say crisps. So I think if you're watching in the US, that's chips, isn't it? Chips. We call them crisps. You call them chips. Is that right? You'll have to <laughs> let me know. I do love these differences between the same language but it's very different isn't it anyway sort of you know staying in that negative place and allowing myself to just sort of wallow at home i do push myself a little bit and i do think that there are days when i don't but i do think it really helps to actually do something that you know is going to make you feel better those are the days i push myself it's no mean feat sometimes to get out the house is it is what i'm trying to say and i know a lot of you know what i mean by that and i think even if you're really well and you are you know you don't have a maybe a seasonal depression or anything like that and you kind of you know things are going tickety boo even on some days things feel really hard and, and, and leaving the house can feel like a big ask, can't it? Yes. The other side of that, of course, is the congratulations and feeling good part about, you know, when you do do something that you didn't think you'd be able to do. And so you kind of achieve it and it makes you feel better. And so that spurs you on to doing it a little bit more. And that's where I'm at, I have to say. You know the phrase, the cherry on the top? And I often use that when I'm feeling really low and there'll be one little thing, there'll be like five or six big things just go completely wrong. And then there'll be one teeny tiny little thing like you break a cup or you drop something and it spills or something like that. The other day for me, I spilt coffee in bed because I was treating myself to have coffee in bed and I spilt coffee in bed on, onto my clean duvet and that was the cherry on the top. So I think you know what I'm talking about. But if we look at it the other way and we can have the cherry on the top to making us feel good or at least going in that direction, because let's face it, at the moment, the world has got so much going on. And, and sometimes I'm finding anyway that it, it's just too overwhelming and I have to retreat and kind of regroup it's almost like being a wounded animal isn't it in a way sometimes you need to sort of retreat into your cocoon hibernate for a little while lick your wounds have a rest before you poke your head out again does that make sense anyway i don't know if i've explained that very well but that's kind of yeah where i'm at i'm struggling a little bit So I don't know if it's been, you know, the real disappointment and dismay about the landlord thing that I was telling you earlier. But at the end of the day, there's so much going on right now. And I think we're all feeling it no matter, you know, what level that is, because, you know, obviously some people are going through more stuff than others. I know some of you will say you've just had a really stressful life change with the move and everything. And I appreciate that. But at the same time, on the grand scheme of things of stuff going on in the world, that's not such a big deal right now, is it? But I think the important thing to remember is that the little things really, really matter right now. And so just doing some little things in the right direction doesn't mean we have to sort of tick boxes and be all productive. I don't think we're meant to do that in the winter. So if you're in the Northern Hemisphere like me, you know, we are seasonal, cyclic 
beings and we are meant to be like that so you know a lot of people are saying oh I just don't feel like doing anything and then I feel overwhelmed and then I, I shut down this is a natural human reaction so don't beat yourself up too much but just remember that those little teeny tiny things really do matter especially right now and in fact, if you think about it and you kind of review in a journal or just in your thoughts, those little things are really not so little after all, are they? I think we've got this. We've totes got this, as my daughter would say. And it's time to show ourselves and each other, if necessary, lots and lots of grace. And that doesn't always mean letting things go off the hook. Sometimes that means grace towards a more consistent routine or practice that's going to provide some nourishment, some proper sort of tough self-love, if you like. Sometimes we need to go in that direction, don't we? Especially at this time of year. I'm going to challenge myself to do at least one thing for my self-care even if it's tough self-love, self-care, every single day from now on. And so, yeah, I challenge you to do the same, at least one thing. I'm also gonna take each day, even hour, sometimes moment by moment at a time. And taking life in those bite-sized chunks is more than enough right now. In fact, sometimes I think that slowing down and doing one thing at a time, and even sometimes doing nothing, I've got a whole video about both of those things, the art of doing nothing. And that doesn't mean wasting your time. No, sitting worrying and procrastinating. This is a real doing nothing, which clears your mind. So it's like a meditative practice. And in my opinion, we don't do enough of it. So we should do that more and practice getting better at it because it's not the easiest thing either, is it? We know. Slowing down, giving ourselves a chance to breathe because these small things really do make a difference, don't they? Note to self as well. We totes got this. So as often happens with seizing my new bunny thing that came with my shelfy thing, anyway, that works really well actually. But as often happens, you know, you can be thinking about something or you've had a dream and this, that and the other. We were talking about doing little things and how important they are and I just came across this Instagram post and it's not someone I follow, it just kind of, you know, they come up as recommended. So it's at Nas Neuro, N-A-S Neuro. And it says rewire your brain in weeks and it's talking about the little things. So I just thought I would, you know, pop back in and share it with you because I thought it was really good. And it says neuroscience shows that as little as one week of repetition can rewire parts of your brain and induce neuroplasticity. So that's when your brain neural pathways start to reform, if you like, when you do different habits and routines, isn't it? But it says here as little as one week repetition. So I didn't know that. And then it says, use that to your advantage. Adopt simple changes that can easily be repeated and rewire your brain to form long lasting habits. Start simple and take action. And then the, it's quite cute. Can you see the, and their list of little things is daily walk, limit your scrolling, time in nature, take the stairs that can be a good one can't it and I'm certainly getting used to that now because I've got a house not a flat drink more water consistent bedtime read three pages of your book meditate set a t five minute timer phone away 30 minutes before bed so all little simple tasks that don't cost anything and can really help us and so we can literally change and i often think we can literally do it now so often you know we kind of put off till tomorrow oh well i'll start tomorrow i'll, I'll eat healthy tomorrow but then why can't we start now that's I've always wondered that. Why can't we start now and then by the time you get to tomorrow, you've already got that pre-bit, so it kind of motivates you to, yeah, that's what I'm thinking anyway. Anyway, in case it was useful, I thought I would just share that little thing. Because as we've been saying, these little things are not so little, are they? So, I'm just looking under my desk and I've just realised... 
And I had a feeling actually that I hadn't found all my pens. <laughs> kind of got my flesh tones at the top the blacks and greys and then the brights and I've taken out the uh, paint pens as well but um yeah juicy it's such a good thing you can see all the colors and they're not you know vertical which doesn't do them any good so my energy is good today so I'm going to utilize that. I've got to do a couple of things. I've got to pop into the Patreon cafe which I do, I try and do every day, every weekday. I've also got to put the art journaling prompt up. Am I, um, I don't even know if I'm in the shot. I think I'm going to do it on the day bed because although I said my energy's up, why not get comfy? That's what I say. Did I mention it's the little things? So I'm just reading my Patreon comments and uh, I've got a comment from Janet. This is in the cafe, one pound a month tier, and you get the cafe every week and stuff. But anyway, we chat in there, but Janet's saying, normal wear and tear cannot be charged for in the US. These former landlords will get their karma. You and James will be triply blessed for leaving the place so spotless. This home is charming and I love the yard. I really enjoy this vloggy because I put a like a house vloggy up. Let's see if I can show you. Yeah, that was the vloggy I put up, which I haven't done for ages, but I think I'm going to start doing those every month. And then I also put up, you see, I am busy, even though I'm not on this YouTube. I also put a paint with me up as well. So, yeah, there's a few bits and bobs in the vloggy. And then this is the cafe. There we go. It's called the Pop-In Cafe. It's where I hang out a little bit. So I'm just going to hang out there a little bit more because <laughs> it's fun. And I love, I love reading everything. This is my current view. Those lights are not actually flashing. They are being picked up as flashing by the camera because they vibrate at a certain hertz or something. But isn't that pretty? Surrounded by plant babies and down there. So I've pretty much done all my admin-y computer type jobs. I love these darker evenings. It's really nice to have a space in here where I can chill. Never actually napped properly here. I probably should bring a little blanket in just in case. It's getting chilly actually. I think I'm gonna go home. I might stop off along the way. I don't know yet. Anyway, we'll see. Yes. Okay. Get our gloves on. It's cold. Although one of my patrons who lives in Norway, Marianne, hello Marianne, she is a blessing but anyway she messaged this morning and she said in the cafe it's minus 21 where she is so um not even in the minuses always be careful where am i supposed to go yes. there is a lot of van dwellers and Cold, so I wouldn't like to be living in my van still. We were very lucky, always had a heater. Well, actually, that's not entirely true. The first van we had, we had no heater. I had a hairdryer, and yeah, I remember sitting in the van in Paris with a hairdryer on because it was so cold. Anyway. Thank you. 